I've waited for so long, a week longer than I should have, for this. And, but we got everything we need for this month as we got an update. In the indoor arena game, we got an update, baby. We got an update. And let me tell you, the Tulsa team, they're going to be named the Oilers. It's, it's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, that's the same name as the hockey team. You know, their logo looks kind of like the, the Houston Oilers. I mean, it is what it is. Marvin Jones is going to be the head, head coach. Joshua Brexignalo, he came over from Carolina. He'll be the offensive coordinator. Then Darren Arbett. He'll be the new Bay Area head coach, and, you know, we got signings and stuff like that that's going on right now, like E.J. Hilliard's back with Quad City, Drew Powell's back with Arizona after flip-flopping, because I believe he went to a CFL team, and I know Bay Area has been signing guys left and right. Oh, my goodness. They look like a contender in the IFL this year. As we thought, you know, based off of the season ticket information, you know, thing from Quad City, it seemed like the IFL... Is going to go back to 14 games. But no, that was not the case because the IFL released their schedule today. And that's what I was waiting on. I was waiting on the IFL to release their schedule for today. And it's back. The IFL is coming back on March the 17th. 15 games for each team. There's 14 teams. We'll get to that in a moment. 18 weeks, 105 games from March the 17th. All the way up to July 15th. So it's going to be a long season. Let me tell you. It's going to be a long, good season. Um, we'll talk about when we start back up this weekend indoor football in a moment. But um, let me tell you. You know, the free agencies opened up. It opened up last month on the 15th of September. And, you know, things, again, things have been flying off the radar. So what, what, do, you, what do you mean there's only four? 14 teams in the IFL. What do you mean? Like, Tulsa's here, but aren't there supposed to be, you know, a couple more? You know? Well, unfortunately for Bismarck, they uh, they had some issues with workers' comp. And that was the thing that killed the Oklahoma Flying Aces down in Enid, Oklahoma. And unfortunately, those costs are just a bit too much. To the point where Bismarck said, "All right, we we're not doing season tickets," and then you also had, you know, the fact that the Beck Center, their lease with the Beck Center expired as well. So you know, by the time it was October seventh, the team was like, "I right, we we're not playing in 2023. Maybe we'll come back in 2024, and maybe Columbus." No, I'm just kidding. Columbus is probably never playing. Why, why is that team still listed? Get them off, please. It makes you look unprofessional. But there is something professional about all of this. The IFL's got their schedule out. The IFL's got their teams ready to go. Yeah, it's 15 games for each team. That's the bad part because you kind of want a balanced schedule. Um, but, I mean, arena availability is what it is. That's it's just, it's just facts. I mean, come on. I mean, you look at uh, 2021, for an example of arena availability being a big thing but the big thing that came from this is the IFL and the XFL have a partnership involving movement of players to and from the league so basically this like a talent exchange of sorts so that's the biggest thing that I uh, I'm I'm very excited about. That, that that's the biggest thing I'm excited about because this is big for the IFL, the XFL. We already know has a partnership with the NFL, so this is going to help the IFL immensely. Now, you know, still some kinks need to be worked out in the IFL right now. But right now, they're, they're still riding high on good momentum right now. So I, I'm liking where it's going. I'm liking where it's going with the IFL right now. Could things change throughout you know 2023? Who knows? We'll find that out as we get there. Um, and again, you know, I'm excited for the IFL season. I'm excited for the Frisco Fighters because I'm a Frisco Fighters fan. And I'm excited for the rest of the teams and all the homies in the Discord getting ready to, you know, just just have a good time 
with the IFL coming in 2023. Cannot wait to have another good season with my fellow 50 yard shit posters in Discord and everything like that. So I'm excited for that. And um, I have some things coming down the pipe. We're I'm waiting, you know, some things right now because I mean I'm in a tight spot right now. But um, I think the IFL again in a good position right now. A lot of coaching changes again, like Resignala left Carolina, so James Fuller had to replace him. And we're talking about the NAL now. Right now for the NAL, really, it's just coaching. There have been some signings, I think, but not not as much. But I know who you can go to about that. And it's my boys. Zach and Jim, who are also in the same Discord with me, and they have their own Discord as well. But you can go to Inside the Walls podcast if you want to know more about what the NAL is doing right now. It could be you got Charles Gunning, so he'll be out in Fayetteville coaching Herky Walls in Orlando, and it, it's 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 going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time for the NAL. I think um, they're they're going to be the last ones yet again. You know, as far as the big three go oh, to release their schedule, and I don't know when they'll release theirs. They they usually, I don't remember when they usually release theirs, but whenever they do, uh, you know, by by the time they do, I'll, we'll have another update ready to go. And it'll be like sometime in November, probably before, you know, probably during Thanksgiving week, you know, that we'll have another indoor or you know football update and stuff like that so you know there's that um in the nal right now just a lot of coaching changes a lot of you know um, uh, some players being moved around and stuff like that some players being re-signed i mean it is what it is that's that's just that's just the normal stuff going on you know the nfl nal likes to start their season a little later in april so they're in a good spot you know they're in a good spot right now. They got their they got their eight teams ready to go, and everything should be peachy clean. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, some people kind of still think the NAL is kind of inferior to the IFL or anything, but I think you know the NAL kind of bounced back again with you know the cup with the franchises they announced again. Like they always seem to feel like they've been underappreciated, and yet they keep. Up in the ante and saying, "Hey, we're we're not here to be underappreciated. We're here to be appreciated." And the NAL once again continues to blow my mind because people have been saying, "Oh, well, the league's gonna die," like three years in a row, and it's still not dead. It's persevering. That's the word I was looking for. It's persevering in the face of pressure. The biggest changes, however, go to the CIF because. Um, I don't know what in the world happened because there were a lot of things that have happened in the CIF and unfortunately not all of them were good things. Not all of them were good things. So again the CIF unfortunately after, you know, the what, the twenty twenty one off season, they just they just had a bad, you know, year and a half or so, like a bad fifteen, sixteen months, which is about the same amount of time that I've been in this apartment. Um and I'm about to leave it, but um, like Steve Wagner, he was named the new commish, but he had a failed baseball league that had a terrible track record that had so many lawsuits against it that he just quietly got removed. Like he was named the commissioner uh, sometime in between the last update and now, which is like sometime in like September, and he got quietly removed as the commission of the CIF and then Omaha's got a new coach Pat Pimmel Billings has Kerry Lachlan and then Wyoming was like all right we're gonna call ourselves the Gillette Mustangs now which I, I don't I don't get it like there was no reason for the change but whatever it is what it is Brent Funk he's now the owner of Sioux City you know yeah or rather Brent Funk announced Don Belson as the new owner of the Sioux City Bandits, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. I, I misread something. I must have misread my notes here, as usual. And in Topeka, last month, we thought they weren't returning for 2023, but it turns out they are. New owners bought the team, so they are back. We are tropical again, baby. Go tropics. 
They did the CIF release their schedule on the 29th of September. All eight teams from 2022 are returning. Well, wait, what do you mean all eight teams? You know, was so there supposed to be a new team? Oh, yeah. The ICT regulators who we talked about last month and, you know, a couple times before. We thought, a lot of us thought this team was going to join the CIF, but there were some things going on behind the scenes. Again, the Arena League, one thing, you know, it... It didn't really make any sense because, you know, we're like, is, is the CIF going to rebrand to Arena League One? They said they were going to have the nets and stuff like that and the rebounding balls. And, you know, it's like, ah, uh, something's not right here. And then the CIF was like, uh, uh, we, we got our schedule out. We got, we got, we got some stuff done. Here, here's that. No mention of nets. Oh, no, none of that. So, and it's probably because the arenas in the CIF are a bit too small that they where they can't support that. And then, you know, you had Ricky Burtz come up to the ICT regulators um, press conference. And, you know, there that was when we started making connections, you know, to like, hey, maybe this ICT team is going to join. But no, that is not the case. Instead... The regulators will have, you know, a, a bunch of non-league games against CIF teams. And the league, again, I'm going to play 10 games. One non-league game, of course, because that's what the CIF likes to do. Like, and they, they've sprinkled those, you know, some of those are before actual games that count begin on, like, February 19th. And then March 4th, the weekend of March 4th. That's what we're going to come on back with this week in indoor football because that's when the CIF will start up. So this week in indoor football will return March 4th, that weekend of March the 4th. I'm just going to say that right now. And we're going to have a long, long season from March 4th all the way up until probably August. It'll probably be sometime in August, you know, because the IFL will have wrapped up. Probably in August, they'll probably wrap it up in August, maybe that first, second week of August. In AL, we don't know yet, but I assume it'll be the same time frame. Uh, the CIA, I believe they're sticking with the 16 playoff for 2023, and their season, the regular season, will end on May the 27th. So, who's the new commissioner of the CIF now? It's Bob Scott. He, you know, he's been a guy that's been with Sioux City for quite some time now, and I think this is a good move. I think this is a good move. There has been some politics that I've heard of that he's been involved with, you know, as far as like we're talking about the CIF politics. We're talking about in-season CIF politics, not like actual politics, like beef between CIF teams. And I use that term, you know, like the Omaha beef. Um... So, yeah, there's that. Then Amarillo, the Venom, they may be coming back. They got a Facebook post up. They may be coming back. Um, you know, ICT, again, they got their six home games. But, but again, there's an issue there. They're, again, some of these games against CIF teams. Some of these are against other teams. And then the AIFA is the last one here that has something of note. Uh, I don't know what Diamond Showtime Network is. I've never heard of it. Couldn't find anything on it, but they've added the South Florida Thunder, the Florida Fear, and the Memphis Beats to the league. And we all know the South Florida Thunder, right? Yeah, they, they've they hardly played at all in the past couple years. They played like maybe one game total, probably zero, but they're back along with the rest of the AIF teams. So I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll find out. As we get towards, you know, December and whatnot. But by the time you see this, um, well, you know, you're going to have a good old Friday. I hope you all have a good Friday and whatnot because there's still time left on Friday, you know, to get something done. I'm going to relax because I've had a long week of substituting. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you all this weekend or rather throughout the weekend to talk college football and stuff.